Let's Talk About Drugs, New Methods of Communication with Youth is a project which aims uh, to support youth workers, peer educators, outreach workers, specialists uh, and experts working in the field of harm reduction on how to communicate with young people about drugs and how to find effective ways and methods as well as approaches to speak with young people on this topic. The objectives uh, of the project are to conduct an assessment uh, on the drug education situation in the countries and uh, uh, to prepare a report, regional report, to develop a manual on drug education for youth workers uh, on how to communicate with young people on this topic, as well to produce online videos in each country uh, based on the relevant topics uh, which are related uh, with drugs, to provide free series of trainings based on the manual Manual, and to share and discuss uh, all the results of our project on national, regional and uh, global level. And of course, uh, to keep sustainability of this project and uh, to spread the message uh, with uh, our partners. Within this project, uh, we did the regional assessment report on drug education that was namely served to assess the opinions and uh, uh, laws in each country on drug education that currently exist. It was done in three parts. So firstly, we did the desk research. Afterwards, we did the online uh, data collection aimed at uh, youth workers and the young people that might be uh, uh, using drugs. And uh, we did the focus groups with the different stakeholders, such as the decision makers, youth workers who are working in the field of drug use, and then youth workers who are not from the field, to assess their opinions on the quality of drug education provided in their countries. Main findings of the regional assessment report are showing that the interviews are not uh, satisfied with the current uh, quality of uh, drug education provided in their countries and that that drug education should be based also on opinions of young people who might be in risk and young people who are and should be receiving those informations. The challenge we see in Europe in terms of drug education is I think that there is no one unified system. Of course, uh, um, we do know that no, uh, there is no one size that fits all, uh, but at the same time what we see right now is that uh, in each country or region or even each, in each school, um, the wheel is being reinvented each time. Each, each school or each district or each city or each country, they have their own systems, uh, which they create on their own, um, and they are not really using the experiences um, gained in other uh, parts of the, our continent. And that's why uh, we decided to build a drug education manual um, that is being produced based on the um, experiences uh, gained in uh, six countries that are participating in this project. Uh, this manual will consist of three parts. The first one is focused um, on the basics, so to say, drug policy, what is harm reduction, basic terminology, what you need to know to start with the topic. Uh, then the second part is focused on the youth specifically, because we do use um, quite a bit of different methods when, you, when we want to talk about the drugs to young people than, for example, adults, uh, people who use drugs for quite some time, uh, yeah, the teenagers or, or adolescents are a bit different and we do use different approaches. The, the, the education is also taking part in different environment uh, than in other groups and so on. And the third part is focused on the communication methods, um, how you can communicate on this topic effectively uh, to the people that you want to communicate to. I think the trainings uh, are really practical and was necessary. Like, I got uh, really good feedback for our participants, like from the first training. It was like uh, fundamental basics of harm reduction, you know. And like about the second, it was uh, like about the ethics and communication with young people. Uh, I participated in those myself. It was like a really good experience. And also what I'm happy about that, uh, you know, I made really good connection with some people, with other organizations. So it's not just, you know, uh, building the partnership, but also friendship. And like the third training is about advocacy and like making the video. So I think it's also important to working in this field, you know, and like working towards the change. 
We got a very good framework about how to do critical thinking, how to approach certain topics. Our role in this project was to teach young people about how to communicate with the media effectively and how to use video in advocacy or communication with, with young people. I understood some of what it means to communicate with the media. There are legal issues, there is the issue of stigma, of discrimination. So it is very, very important to know exactly how to communicate, how to get your point across. In the second half of the training, we were learning about video advocacy, how to make movies, so, to get out, so you're able to get out to a, a larger audience and to get out to young people with your messages. Not many projects are uh, created anymore without some kind of visual output. So it is very important for activists from organizations that work in harm reduction to be able to create at least some visual content on their own, which is exactly actually what this training provides, right? The role of our organization, Smart Foundation, as well as the other partners, is to reach out as much people as we can. And uh, that's why what we did is to organize multiplier events, to send participants to trainings, but also to, to find the proper experts, to find the proper partners, to connect them and to make them acquaint with all the knowledge that was gathered and was developed in, in the frame of this project.